everybody and welcome or welcome back to the coffee and craft podcast my name is bernadette and this is where i talk to you about all the fun stuff i've been crafting whether it be knitting crochet cross stitch sewing or some other kind of crafty thing i always forget to mention this so i'm just going to do it right off the bat um, if you ever want any more information on any of the projects that i mentioned there is a link in the description box um, that will take you over to the blog to the show note that will give you all the information about all the projects that i speak about the notes are over there because i make them meticulous and hyperlink to as many things as humanly possible if you're looking for more info that is where to go there's also a link tree link down in the description box for with links where you can find me other places on the internet also has a link to my ko-fi and then it also has my nitpicks affiliate link I don't have cats with me at the moment, but because I've closed the door to my office, the odds are the cats will try and show up at some point. So, um, it may or may not change. I do have coffee, or did. I drank it while I was setting up, because <laughs> this takes way more time than I would like to admit it does. My friend got me this mug and I felt like it was appropriate. This is one of my favorite Christmas mugs. R.I.P. Grumpy Cat. It holds so much coffee, as really any Christmas mug should. I have a fun combination of crocheting and knitting today. So first thing is a couple of Christmas crochet cotton things I whipped up one evening um, when I decided I needed more Christmas decor and uh, didn't want to leave my house. I made a couple of Christmas dishcloths. They're just plain square ones. Um, the pattern I technically used is a t the Teal Swirl Dishcloth by Heidi Weld. Really, it's just like a loose, solid granny square. And also, clearly, my gauge is weird because it's wonky, but it's a dishcloth. I have this guy, and then I have this one. Um, this one is mainly... All these yarns were in my stash, so I'm guessing as to what they were. Um, but I believe that these are all Rainbow 8-4 from Hobby. Um, and then this is just some leftover suds I had, um, suds crochet cotton. And then this guy is a uh, Bernat Handicrafter. And then I also decided to crochet up some coasters uh, to add some festiveness to my tables. I made these little like baubles. So we have red, white, um, more of the suds crochet that's like the speckly and then green. These guys are all just Bernat Handicrafter. Uh, this top like gray color I, is from Hobby. I can't remember exactly what it is. If I remember, I will put it in the show notes. The pattern for these is just called Christmas Coaster, which is perfect. I crocheted these with the same hook that I use for these, which did mean that my gauge was off. <laughs> So initially there were two more rounds on these and they ended up huge. So I just, I pulled them back to be three rounds. If I had done them properly, they would have taken me like no time at all. I think the pattern recommends that you use a either 4.5 or a five millimeter. And I did these with a five and a half, but then I did use a four millimeter, I believe for the, the top bit. The most exciting thing about all of these is now that I've talked about them, I can use them. <laughs> Speaking of Christmas crochet, I was inspired slash uh, enabled by my friend Kirsten, otherwise known as Knitting a Love Song on um, Instagram and I think most other places, to make a tree skirt for my Christmas tree. It's something I've been meaning to do for years and just never have gotten around to. And we were chatting about it and she sent me a bunch of patterns and I ordered yarn I didn't need, but I wrote it off as a science experiment. <laughs> I ordered five skeins of the Ogo Red Heart Super Saver yarn um, because they had a Christmas colorway and I wanted to see what all the hype was about with the Ogo yarn in a sec. But this is the tree skirt. The pattern is the Holly Jolly Tree Skirt by Megan Meyer. Um, we now also have a bean in here but um, it's pretty simple. It's a free pattern. Um, you hold worsted weight yarn double all the way through um, and use an eight millimeter hook and you crochet through the back loop. Um, this is it folded in half. It's quite large. It kind of sucked my will to live towards the end of it, which is probably why I've never made a tree skirt before. It just the rows are just so long. Initially I was zooming through it and then by the end I just kind of wanted to die. But now we have it. <laughs> and we'll have it for the rest of our lives, hopefully, and I'll never have to make one again. Until now, the tree has just been kind of naked. Her original pattern, she uses Karen, um, she uses Karen cakes 
I, again, like I said, wanted to use the Ogos. Um, it is a self-patterning or self-striping Red Heart Super Saver. Um, so there are some weird sections of uh, pooling. Um, but when it's wrapped around the Christmas tree, I can just put that at the back. Um, and for the most part, it just looks like a really cute kind of scrappy tree skirt. The pattern was really easy to follow. I think with any tree skirt, the end rows will always want to suck your soul out, regardless of what you're actually making. I did end this three rows early because of the soul sucking and also um, because of the fact that I have a pencil tree. Um, and if I made it three rows wider, it would look very big for my small tree. I also was somehow running out of yarn. Initially, I ordered three, no, five skeins from Yarn Inspirations. Again, it's held double. I think initially I may have had some other plan, um, but like this is all I have left. My plan was to have a whole extra skein left over in order to knit um, stockings for my cats, <laughs> uh, which it will still happen because um, they don't have any right now. Well, Luna doesn't have one and we have two cat stockings already and I can't find one that matches. So I must start all over. But anyhow, the Ogos come in this like weird cylindrical shape. Initially, they're like about twice this size. Um, so I guess I have like half a skein left-ish. When you get them, they're in like kind of a circle donut shape. Um, and there is a, like a plastic tie that's going all the way through them. And you cut the tie and you're supposed to just be able to start pulling from one end like this. The whole idea of this is that it's supposed to be tangle free, um, which to be honest, I didn't realize was an issue that any of us was actually having. I'm like 85 to 90% sure that all they had to do was just not fill up the machine as much and stretch things out to make this weird shape. The only thing I kind of like about this shape is that it's easier to divide up the colors and do yarn management than it would be if the yarn was just like skeined up normally. Thing I don't like, it is hard to transport um, and it's like three times the price of, uh, for example, this is Red Heart Super Saver. This shape comes in a bunch of different yarns, um, but like this specific yarn was like 850 a skein, which I would never pay for Red Heart Super Saver, almost ever. Like I know that this is Prince, so like in theory it would be more expensive, but like Red Heart Super Saver is normally like three bucks a ball which is part of the appeal of Red Heart Super Saver is that it's so affordable. Although I appreciate them trying to revamp the image of Red Heart Super Saver a little bit, um, this wasn't the direction to go. Um, you get less yarn, it's more expensive, and you're making something that's affordable more elitist for reasons I don't understand. Like if this was the same price or at least closer to, I would have less of a problem with it. You also normally get like 300 to 400 yards. I think I got 236 yards. I needed five skeins to make a tree skirt. So um, I bought it for science, <laughs> um, so no one else had to. Like you could do this type of color management with a regular Red Heart Super Saver print if you wanted to. It would just take a lot more work to do it. So if you are wanting to do color management, I think this is a great format for yarn. Otherwise, I don't think it's worth your time. Yeah, and like the Burnett Blanket ones, I pulled up the website so I can look at the prices. The Burnett Blanket Ogos, which are 300 grams, are like 16.50 in like Canadian money. So like $3 American. Tree skirt wise, it looks different than the pattern. It looks pretty scrappy, but like my life is scrappy and holding yarn double is pretty on brand for me. So um, I'm pretty happy with this. The cats also love it, um, which is really what's important. I keep catching pebbles <laughs> and also Luna just sitting underneath the tree because they just think it's a carpet. In November, I was kind of working on trying to finish up as many of my whips as possible. It didn't really work. There's still a ton on that wall, but I was able to at least get a really long lingering whip off my needles, which I'm so excited about. Um, I finally finished this vanilla pair of socks. I have two of them, proof. Basic toe up, legal heel, um, with just a two by two rib. Only yarn management I did is I pulled from the center, center of the ball to do uh, the heel flap. I just didn't want to interrupt the stripe pattern and I wanted this to all look connected. Flegal heels are some of my favorite to knit. Um, they wear okay-ish. <laughs> um, nothing can stand up to Brian's wearing of socks ever heel wise. These I cast on in July to go see like Fast and the Furious in theaters for the first time ever. And I just finished them now. There is no reason they should have taken this long. I have a really hard time focusing on things. And uh, I think these fell prey to that. 
my brain gets bored with something, I just never want to pick it up again. I believe that's why these took so long is I would be like, I'm going to knit on these and then like I would end up on my phone. I'm going to save these to go in Brian's stocking um, for Christmas because why not? Trying to think about what I want my 2022 knitting goals to be. Um, and besides not buying yarn, which I think is everyone's goal um, in the beginning of the year until probably Knit City, um, <laughs> as long as it happens. I really want to dig in to my sock yarn stash. Like finishing these made me want to knit more socks, but I got other stuff I got to do. So I have my last finished object, which is also kind of a whip. Like the responsible knitter I am, I have left my uh, Christmas knitting to the month of December. Some of it's because I've procrastinated and some are just because requests came in at the last minute. These are requests that came in last minute. My mother-in-law requested some mittens to wear while walking her dog. Wanted something easy care. Normally when I knit mittens I like to hold something double with mohair or um, even I think alpaca will work but generally mohair or like a possum blend um, because that stops wind the like fluffy fibers kind of mat together in a way that stops wind and makes them a lot warmer because she wanted something easy care I couldn't do that this time um, but I did look up quick durable mittens I think on Ravelry and I found the school mittens pattern by Janice Chris Jansen definitely saying it wrong um, but what it is is it's a pattern that's designed uh, designed to knit like mittens for school kids so they go fast and they're durable and like both of these things are what I wanted. So the pattern holds sock yarn tripled which again on brand for me and I was able to dig some yarn out of my stash. Um, so I have one pair finished and one on the needles. Both are being made with drops fable um, held double with a single strand of like an anonymous single color in my stash. Um, I made the adults small um but this is the like drops fable kind of peacock colorway um just did a two by two rib um the only modification i made is i cast on three stitches um after we divide for the thumb instead of two um but that's pretty much it uh they're actually pretty warm um so hopefully things will go well um for her but because they're sock yarn, they should be able to put up with a decent amount of like whatever comes up on dog walks. Made a very long appearance on uh, the mini vlogmas I've been doing. I always want to do vlogmas every year. The only reason I don't is because editing is a really big mental hurdle for me. <laughs> I don't enjoy doing it. Um, it's something that makes my video quality much better, um, but I just, I don't like it. I don't like the process. It takes three times longer and like I get really obsessive about small details and the idea of editing videos every day it kind of seems like a nightmare to me. So <laughs> what I decided to do this year is I've been doing like mini vlogmas on TikTok because I'm just filming small clips and shoving them together in an app, which is a lot more accessible for me. I do plan on like taking them all, um, taking a week's worth of them and uploading them on YouTube. I will have to change the music though. They are in their original forms, obviously on my TikTok and then also on my Instagram stories. Um, if you do want to see what random music I've picked for them, picking the music for TikToks is the hardest part. I had a couple of days where I was just knitting on almost these guys just exclusively. So you got to see knitting of these steps, but I think these only took me like two days and they probably would have taken me less time if I'd been paying attention. The pattern is knit on a US 7. So even without the mohair, it is a very dense kind of gauge and dense and squishy. So hopefully that should keep out wind. I have the one that's in progress in here. I'm making her two pairs so she doesn't have to worry about like washing them in order to go out so she can alternate them. But I have them living in this kind of festive long view creations bag. More drops fable um, in this like purpley color, which is 904 according to the ball band, just kind of purpley. And I'm holding it with just like generic white. Um, these were held with a blue. Yeah, that's our little beginning cuff there. I've been trying to knit while I read on these so hopefully these will get some work later tonight. Christmas present halfway done. This will be the other one. I should be focusing on Christmas knitting but I keep getting distracted by my advent calendar because the advent calendar is more fun. But before advent when I was trying to work my way through more whips after I finished those socks I finally picked up my gentle people shawl again so I thought I'd just show you the progress I made 
on this guy. Yeah, I made it into section two. I think the last time I showed you guys, it was only on section one. Um, so this yarn is Custom Woolen Mills 2-ply in the Fox colorway. I got this at Wet Coast Wool's was pretty fully enabled by a post Margot made <laughs> of the new Custom Woolen Mills colorways. I've always wanted them to do like a rust color. And here we are. Um, so uh, section one, it's just a basic stockinette kind of garter ridge shawl um, by Sylvia McFadden. Um, so section one is up until this little cookie marker. <laughs> and then section two, they kind of get, the ridges get closer together. Um, I put the marker there so I can just count the ridges to know how many repeats I have to do. And then once we're through this section, it's just a ton of garter, which will be great for reading. I still have a really decent amount of yarn left, so I might make it bigger in the garter section, depending. I do know that the end parts of shawls eat up yarn though. So I still have like this much of my second ball and like a whole third one. So funny when you pull out a whip and you're like, oh, this is nice, I should finish this. But <laughs> this is nice, I should finish this. All right, and the final piece de resistance, I guess, um, <laughs> is my is my advent calendar. Last year I made a Bits and Bobs blanket with the two advent calendars that I got myself. I went overboard this year with advent calendars. Um, I got five in total, uh, five yarn advent calendars, um, one of which um, is from Fiber Art Studio. It's a 12 day advent calendar. So I'm gonna save it for the 12 days of Christmas or I'm gonna open it on Yule. I haven't decided which. Um, I think opening it on Yule would be kind of cool. Um, it's my first Yule as a baby witch. So I think it would be fun. The other advent calendars I got, another advent calendar from Corner of Craft because I love her advent calendars. You get a little dice set as well and I am a dice goblin. So <laughs> I can't turn down a dice set. I got one from Tofino Knit Co. Hers is Disney themed and she's killing it. Some of them I can picture the VHS cover in my mind <laughs> with the colors that she's picked. And then I also got uh, a 10 gram one from Polka Dot Creek. And then I also got the Ginger Snap one. Now I did not realize at the time of purchasing them uh, that the Ginger Snap one, and I think also the Polka Dot Creek one are both gradients, which is gonna interfere with what I'm doing. Um, I am crocheting, I'm crocheting granny squares so I can like arrange them in a different way. But since I have two gradients, it's gonna make arranging them fun so it looks random. So I'm following a pattern called spin your granny. I'm following a pattern just so I can consistently do it. because <laughs> I find myself with granny square blankets. Sometimes my granny squares shift depending on when I picked up the granny square. She has you take the granny squares and instead of doing them this way or joining them this way, you join them diagonally um, and you like go around it in a plain color. And the reason I wanted to do that that way instead of join them as I go with the colors that they are, because I'm combining four advent calendars, I have no idea how they're gonna look next to each other. And because I found out that two of my four advent calendars are secretly gradients, I'm really glad I did that because then I can make them look random. But I have them living in the bag that came with my Tofino Knit Co. advent calendar. Um, which is this guy. It's got little um, mini on there, which I love because my parents used to have um, a Christmas ornament of Minnie and Mickey in like a car. It was like the ornament they got when they first got married. So the fact that I, I have this bag now makes me happy. Um, it also, the whole kit also came with a really lovely um, candle, which I've been afraid to light because it's fancy. For the days that I finished, I've actually woven in the ends and then I took a bit of scrap yarn and kind of tied them together. So this was day one. Um, this is Corner of Craft, I believe. This one I know is Tofino Knit Co. because it's sparkly. Uh, this one was Polka Dot Creek. And then this is Ginger Snap. So Polka Dot Creek I only have one of because it's a 10 gram mini. The other ones are all 20. Um, and because the 10 gram is the smallest and I want to integrate it in a way that makes sense, we make the square for the smallest size. Um, it's a five round granny. And I think it's like eyeballing this because I do not have a measuring tape handy. I think it's like two and a half, three inches. I think my finger is like, it's the length of my finger. <laughs> this is day two. So that's Polka Dot Creek. This is Corner of Craft. That's Ginger Snap. 
and then this is Tofino Nitco. Now this specific colorway is one of the ones where I can picture the VHS color cover. This is uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol, and this is like bang on what the VHS looks like. And yes, the VHS, I don't know what the D DVD looks like. When I was watching Mickey's Christmas Carol, I was a child, <laughs> so VHS. Yeah, so those are all, ends all are all woven in. Haven't done day four yet, and I haven't woven in the ends on day three. So I think this is day three. <laughs> um, Polka Dot Creek. Uh, Dafino Nitko, Ginger Snap, and then this was Corner of Craft. Day four. So Polka Dot Creek. This one is uh, Tofino Nitko. This is like Winnie the Pooh, uh, Winnie the Pooh's Christmas. Um, funnily enough, Corner Chromatic Yarns also had like a mustard. It was a mustard and pink day. And then Ginger Snap, very bright pink. Um, and then day five, which is today, I haven't even wound up. <laughs> we haven't gotten there today. It's been a slow start of a day, but uh, Ginger Snap, uh, Corner of Craft, Dafino Nitco, and then uh, Polka Dot Creek. I look forward to playing with all of the squares and putting them all together. I have no idea what color I'm going to edge them all in. I'm gonna have to try and pick like a color that doesn't blend into any of these which will be hard because we have like some light pinks, we have some grays. If there's no black, we'll go with black. Um, if anyone's gonna give me black, it will be chromatic yarns. <laughs> so we will see what happens there. Because these are turned diagonally, there is like a pattern, a uh, piece of the pattern to make a triangle that fills in the gap. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do for that. I do have little bits and pieces left over of these, not enough to do a whole round. Um, but I do have like little bits left over. So I might see if I can use those little bits. I'm following the pattern exactly because it's a DK weight pattern. So I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook. So that's all of my crafting. Um, I did have a couple of like little channely bits. When you see this, I think it will have been a couple of weeks ago, I put out a video on me setting up my 2022 planner. Like I've been secretly playing with my planner all year. Um, <laughs> and. I kind of just wanted to share my joy about my planner with everybody. And that video seems to be hitting reasonably well. I know it's not everyone's bag, um, but I do plan on continuing to make more planner videos. If you are watching this and also watch the planner videos, because I don't know how much crossover there will be. Um, if there are specific things you want to see um, when it comes to planner content, let me know in the comments. If not, I will guesstimate. I don't know if I'm gonna do like plan with me's cause I do those on TikTok. I might do a compilation thing and then do a flip through at the end of the month. That's kind of my thought on that. Um, I will warn you all now, I write like a doctor or a goblin depending on uh, <laughs> which metaphor you prefer. Also, hopefully by the time you're seeing this, you will have seen that creepy knitting is making a comeback. My health has been on the up, so I'm bringing that back. I just kind of put on hiatus because I wasn't feeling great and didn't have the energy to put towards doing the research. I had a request for folklore episodes because my Christmas episode last year was a lot of folklore. I think it's also a really good break from like the murder. <laughs> so I'm gonna be throwing in more folklore episodes. I think I'm gonna be doing more folklore stuff. I think it's really fun. It's a nice light break. Um, the episode I just did was on Baba Yaga, um, who I love. Um, I have a little Baba Yaga print here. <laughs> I joke frequently that she's kind of my retirement plan. Uh, I'm gonna move to the woods, live in a house that's on chicken feet that no one can enter without a password. Yeah, and I also have a special Christmas episode planned uh, for next week that will be like the pagan connections to Christmas and circling back just more things I have planned it will hopefully come later this month. I am planning on filming a video about adding like a grimoire type section to my planner because um, it's a witchy type planner anyway. Pretty much all I have. I hope that you are happy and healthy and that your crafting is bringing you joy. Bye. Mm -hmm.